This is a transistor circuit I use it as a uh, basic frequency oscillator. Uh, it's got uh, a range selection and uh, a varying frequency adjustment, uh, but it's based upon a much simpler oscillator. So this is a, a basic transistor flip-flop oscillator. Uh, and it's a very um, symmetrical circuit, so everything on the left-hand side here is the same as everything on the right-hand side there. And it works by, um, when it's turned on, the first transistor to, to actually switch on will be dependent on sort of um, the charge that may be residual in the capacitors from last time it's turned on and, and the, uh, the um, tolerances of all the comp components. But, so... For a moment, there'll be both LEDs will be on at the same time because uh, for a moment uh, both transistors will be switched on. Uh, but as soon as one uh, reaches uh, saturation, then it will switch off totally the other transistor, and uh, th that tra the transistor on the other side will be sw switched on, and it will be allowing current to go through the LED until the capacitor is charged. And then once the capacitor is charged, it stops the uh, current flowing there and and, and um, allows this transistor be switched off uh, which will then switch on this transistor the other LED will light and it will keep going backwards and forwards and create a simple oscillator so I've got the actual circuit for the simple flip-flop here I can just demonstrate it um, apparent up and as you can see it just switches the uh, LEDs on alternately from left to right so that's the basis of the oscillator So I take uh, this basic circuit and I've implemented it here. So we've got the two transistors here. We've got the capacitors, which can be selected a different set of values, uh, but they're on a, a dual switch. So you can select the one nanofarad on both transistors to keep it a nice um, consistent mark and space ratio on the frequency it's generating. Uh, and also the, the resistors, which are on this circuit. So these four resistors at the top equivalent to these uh, four resistors here uh, but there's no LEDs, LEDs the LEDs would be in here if, if they were there uh, and on this on the inter inner resistors I've got a, um, a dual pot variable resistor so I can uh, vary the frequency so you can select the range and then you can adjust the frequency within that range so that's the basic of uh, of the oscillation circuit uh, but then on the out output what I've got is I've got so the output of the frequency comes through here and there's a Darlington transistor arrangement here where you've got two transistors driving a high, the high level um, of the square wave that comes out. Uh, but then when it's uh, switched to low level, you've got another Darlington pair of transistors here to drive a low level there, um, which uh, makes a much, much better uh, square, square wave on the output and it has uh, an amount of power which can actually drive something if required. Uh, and then the last bit of the circuit is up here, where I've got a transistor which um, adjusts the uh, the max the, the high voltage, so you can actually adjust the the amplitude of the frequency coming out as well. So they've got a variable resistor here, which allows uh, more or less current to flow through this transistor to be the higher level of the uh, the actual oscillator. So uh, this is the uh, circuit I've generated. Um, it's Bit difficult to, um, to actually get a good look at this but inside there's there's a circuit which are, uh, which I've um, built up from the circuit diagram all the components in there got all the switching uh, capacitors across here and the oscillating circuit across there driving from a couple of pp3 batteries on the front of the of the uh, generator I've got a on off switch uh, I've got the range selector on here the amplitude adjustment there and the um, uh, the fine frequency adjustment there to to adjust the frequency within each range. Uh, I'm bringing the output on the on a wire here. So to show this circuit in operation, I've got a, a cheap uh, oscilloscope here, which I got from China. I think it was about fifteen pounds. Uh, really handy. I mean, if you're doing audio frequencies, and these are ideal for that. Maybe a bit above audio frequencies, but it's nice. They're they're nice and easy to just like run off a lipo battery and with a, a little boost controller and uh, they're good for like, doing little demonstrations like this. So I'll, I'll switch on the frequency generator. Uh, so it's running and it's creating a clock uh, pulse and I can change the range. So if I just change the range of the oscilloscope as well, 
to there uh, and I can uh, set the amplitude uh, with oh, that's a, sorry that's a frequency the amplitude with this one so I can reduce it or increase it uh, so yeah the fine frequency adjust um, gives you a good range of frequencies across um, as you go uh, and this you, as you can see the actual output square wave is pretty good uh, certainly at this frequency if I go up the range and I adjust um, the oscilloscope uh, it's still pretty good uh, square wave there we're about two kilohertz uh, so but now uh, we go up to this kind of frequency and it starts to like have a bit of a slope on the on the bounds so yeah you can see the sides at about I don't know about some nine about nine kilohertz the sides of the uh, of the square wave starts to slope and that's I'm sure down to capacitance within the circuit so there's probably a way of um, reducing the capacitance within the circuit and making making it better at the higher frequencies um, but as a cheap circuit goes it's, it's not too bad if I go uh, that is actually the top range that I'm I'm on now so what I can do is I can just keep increasing the frequency throughout to, to the full amount they can go to and, and as you can see the sides get uh, and we, we, I've reached the top um, adjustment on the oscilloscope as well that's as fast as the oscilloscope goes uh, and as you can see this the sides start to slope more and more some of the slope might be down to the oscilloscope reaching its top limit as well um, because the sample rate, not all of it though, there's definitely there's definitely slew on the on the actual output wave, but uh, as you go up, it, it gets more and more like uh, sloped. There's not really much of a useful frequency right up there. I guess it stops being. I guess around that amount, that's not that's fairly usable at that kind of level, and that's about seven kilohertz, something like that, by the looks of things on the oscilloscope. Um, yeah, so so up to about seven kilohertz, this is this is uh, okay as a frequency generator, but it actually um, it can generate frequencies nice and easily all the way down to like into the seconds. So here, so this is uh, so you can switch it all the way down to like uh, um, oscillating every few seconds or so. So. So that's, that's 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 quite a good um, point to this uh, frequency generator. But I want to show this frequency generator before I go and show different ways of generating frequencies as well. This is nice and cheap, and it's easy to put together, and you just use a few transistors, and it's a good way of learning about transistors as well.